Because we share. Because we share. All right, so my name's Connor Krakowski. I assume you all know why you're here, uh, why I'm here. Uh, I hope title gives that away. So I, title is, I just bought it, IBM Z890, now what? Well, bought it a couple months ago. It's been a couple months of quite the adventure. So, and that's what this entire presentation is about. So who am I? All right, well, I had a computer in my hands at 18 months old. Uh, my parents gave me a system and I believe it was an IBM Aptiva. So you could say I've come full circle with IBM. Uh, none of my toys stayed together for very long as a kid. I, I learned what a screwdriver was and I used it to my, the best of my ability. Uh, I had a craving to learn more about electronics. These chips inside of all these devices intrigued me. And so I, uh, aspired to become an electrical engineer and uh, so I started collecting vintage computers about two three years ago um, and well it, it's the reason why would probably be because I it, it's everything simpler you can see everything instead of having a couple million transistors on a die you have a couple hundred TTL logic gates, chips, and it's quite easy to understand and learn the basics of digital electronics that way. Uh, Starts collecting slowly, some single microcomputers, Apple IIs, things like that, Commodore 64s. But it wasn't long before, well, I was filling up the back of my truck with stuff. Um, and you, you will notice that that is N026 key punch for, I'm sure, some of the people in the room are familiar. Um, so, anybody want to guess how much I paid for that? Some people know. A little, little more, $9 on eBay. So, some other stuff there. And, and this, um, those are 3270 terminals, terminal controller. Um, there's, there's another terminal controller, a smaller one. So. Uh, yeah, and, and also this. So this is a Data General Nova 4. I drove to Minnesota and back to get that from Maryland, 2,000 mile round trip or so. So yeah, it was all downhill from here. My, my parents basically accepted the fact, they said, no more, please, but they knew it wasn't going to stop. Uh, so then this happens um, on a Vich computer mailing list. Uh, Kind of off topic, but you know, I know some people are interested and post about it, and I, I responded accordingly, of course. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we, we moved into a new house, and there were apparently two air exchangers in the house, and the one in the basement needed work, so there was literally no heat in the basement, so I wasn't joking. Um, <laughs> There were, of course, warnings from the concerned, some close friends of mine. Uh, Dave, he actually has his own Z890. And yeah, um, then of course, there were jokes from the not so concerned. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, I. So this didn't stop me. Uh, I also, I'd already bid on it uh, like the second it came up <laughs> without even thinking of how much it weighed or whatever. So I, so I started planning. Uh, I talked to my parents about getting a new machine. They were like, God, no, please. And I said, oh, don't worry. It's only 1,500 pounds, about seven feet deep, three feet wide, five feet tall, six feet tall, something like that. So. Uh, so I, I realized I was pretty much screwed moving this thing. I, I weigh like 120 pounds. I, could, I can barely push this thing across the floor. Um, so I realized I had to take two trips to get this thing. Uh, one to take out most everything out of the rack and the next trip take the rest out and move the rack itself. Although I didn't know how much the rack alone weighed. Uh, so. But before I realized it, uh, I had won the machine for $237.39. <laughs> and you can see at the time, uh, well actually this was quite a bit after, only 250 people even looked at it. This was actually I think even after I posted about it. So you can 
see how many people actually even care about an old mainframe. So, and about a week later, uh, it began. I uh, worked out with the people who were holding it. And by the way, I purchased this from Rutgers University in New Jersey. Uh, so they, I told them I was going to take two trips. I was going to disassemble the machine. They said, that's fine. Uh, and they'd help me load it. So I took apart. This was the first day. Uh, went from everything in the front to basically stripped down to just the uh, CP cage and the IO cage. Uh, and yeah, basically all that was left was those cages. And that was the back of my truck. I actually had, uh, I had lunch at my grandparents' house. So I, I, did, I had to come back and with this truckload of stuff. Um, so you can see the CPs there, very, very static protected. I, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I basically figured if, if I can get it in the basement, it, it, that's good enough for me. Um, it will be a great paperweight, at least. Um, so then there was the big move. Uh, I had two friends come with me. I had someone who was nearby in the area that came and helped. Uh, so I came up with my truck and a trailer. And you can see there are the two very large. That's the uh, IO cage, and that's the CP booklet cage. Just huge, heavy things. Uh, two people to move that. Uh, so both those came out of the rack, and there, there's what it looked like from my position. I, I made sure my friends were at least somewhat safe. I, I, so, yeah. Uh, and then the rack on the trailer. Uh, basically, we uh, rolled it up to the back of the trailer, and three people, just three, four people, just lifted from the bottom and up and tilted it up on the trailer. Uh, it was actually me and my friends trying to figure out how we're going to get this thing up on the trailer. And one of the guys working there said, oh, let me help. He comes up, and my friends are just about to get ready, and he just lifts the thing up. And he wasn't a big guy either. I, was, I wasn't sure who I just met, but <laughs> I, I, uh, it, considering there's like a two-inch thick steel plate in the bottom of that thing, I, I was impressed. Um, so. And everything was going great, right? Uh, no, I had to go jinx it. Uh, it wasn't going to fit underneath the deck. And this is the first roadblock of the entire project. So this house has an, a half in ground door into the basement and a deck over top of it. Not just a walk-in basement. And that's what really, why I realized I was screwed when I was moving this thing. So I had a walk-in basement. It was going to be easy, but yeah. So. <laughs> Must dig deeper. Uh, so my father excavated some lands with his Kubota. <laughs> um, yes, he, he, he sort of did it by himself. I was like, OK, we got to go dig up some more land. And he's like, oh, that'll be easy. We'd do that. He got out the road to tiller, filled it up. Now, the rack sat outside, actually, for two days. Um, <laughs> but, it, but it's empty. It's just, uh, and of course, that rack, I don't want to know what it would, it would take to destroy that. Um, that thing's built too well. So, and this, this was the squeeze. Uh, yeah, so that was mostly because it was sitting on some plywood and it was pressing up against that, but there's, there was probably only like an inch of space. Uh, so, and it, it was a very tight squeeze. So, like an inch on that side, an inch on that side, two ton hoists to lower it down. And so, uh, moving all of the other pieces into the basement, I uh, weighed everything except the very large uh, chassis, and I estimated the rack itself probably weighs about 800 pounds. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> and finally, lowered it down straight into the basement, and the, the rack, the heaviest part is in the basement, and you can see the other two chassis right there. So. And what, what was learned? <laughs> so always make sure you have a plan. Seriously. <laughs> um, measure twice, move once. I, I tried to move twice, then measure once, then move again, then measure again, then finally fit it underneath the deck. Um, Listen to your mother, get a warehouse. Um, 
And no matter what others tell you, 1,500 pounds of mainframe will move itself if the floor isn't perfectly flat. <laughs> I learned that later, that the uh, basement floor is uh, slightly curved, and pushing it to one side of the basement was like an uphill battle, and then the other side it was like, oh crap, stop rolling. <laughs> so. And then reassembly started. So my father helped me lift the two chassis in and everything else. So I was able to get it myself, power supply units. Uh, this is what basement looked like covered in parts and pieces. Uh, just a ton of I.O. modules, you know. Uh, and basically finished. Uh, I quite honestly took no notes because after taking two photos, I realized, oh, there's a bunch of numbers and stuff on the stickers on the connectors. They're probably labels. I'll just forget about taking notes. And they, in fact, were. So all cut to length. They label where UIs in the rack they are, so which module they're in. Uh, then they uh, label which module this way they're in, and then, and then which connector in that module they're in. So it's quite nicely labeled. It was a breeze to reassemble. Uh, and there, um, it's like it's like one it's like a quarter inch socket size and one or two Allen keys to take apart this entire machine. Very very easy. Um, second roadblock was a bad thermal compound, and apparently I was told this was a problem around the time this machine was made. Uh, basically, I, I assume it's the anodizing on the heat sinks or something, and basically the heat sinks fall off when you remove the I/O cards. And yeah, they, they, when removing I.O. modules, heat sinks appeared. Uh, <laughs> not what I expected. I uh, knew it was, wasn't a good sign. Uh, almost every module had this problem other than like two S-Con cards. So, uh, and repasting these, well, cheap, like $5 in paste, it, it took hours. Um, because you have to go in, scrape off the dyes of the chip with razor blades, and it's, it's a very delicate process not to chip those dyes. So if you have one of these machines, check it. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess if you're going to disassemble it, you'll know. Um, third row block is power. Came with that plug. I had access to that plug. So yeah, I had to get three phase to single phase. Um, Originally wired for three phase, but in the uh, the installation manual, it, it said you can do single phase. So, uh, and a friend of mine had this machine. He said, "Oh yeah, just wire up the first two phases, ignore the third, and you're fine." Phase one to hot, phase two to neutral, ground, and you're fine. And he's an electrical engineer, so I trusted him. Uh, and requires 220 at 30 amps, uh, not a maximally configured machine. You can only run a certain level of machine, but mine wasn't maximally configured, so I'm, I'm fine. Uh, so power, but, but what is that on the screen? Can anybody tell me what that is on the screen? No, well, yes, it is OS2, but what is that specific window there? License agreement, yep. <laughs> Time to play the waiting game. I think it takes about 15 minutes. I haven't been so keen enough to record time, so yeah. And it's fine if you're going to spin up a machine and leave it on for the next 10 years, but if you're going to be turning it on and off over a couple weeks, it gets tiresome. <laughs> you know. Uh, so power on. Uh, at work, just fine. The fan spun up, sounded like I was standing next to a jet. It was great. Um, so then the fourth roadblock is user error. Um, when trying to do a power on reset, giving me tons of I.O. errors. Uh, and I, was, I re rearranged some of the modules, so I thought maybe that was why. I was checking stuff. Um, I realized none of the lights were coming on. I, I didn't know if they just didn't come on until it initialized. So I played around on the ThinkPad for hours. Um, and it solved nothing. I finally decided to go around back and check some of the power cables and realized the power supply was just sat in. I didn't push it all the way in and tighten it in. So, And of course, I think it was only one power supply, and it was the one that was hooked to the power supply that I was currently using. So, oh well. So, there we go. Much better. Lots of lights. Blinky lights. So, um, fifth roadblock was IOCDS. <laughs> 
this, this is where the real learning came in. Uh, I, I knew moving heavy stuff was difficult, but I didn't know what an IOCDS was. So, um, so I had to create a new one. I knew that because what they had configured, they had all their old configuration in there, all of their DASD configuration. So I mean, if, I have, if anybody gets into their machine, I can send you what they had hooked to it. You say, I assume they still have all that DASD because they didn't sell any or else this PowerPoint wouldn't be so long. Um, so uh, I learned how to do that so many PDFs later, uh, help with someone at, from someone else that knew nothing about IOCDSs either, uh, just sort of throwing ideas back and forth. Uh, finally created a, an IOCDS that didn't throw an error, didn't necessarily work, but it didn't throw an error. So um, yeah, and so there's, there's the old IOCDS, huge, long thing with tons of stuff. That's, that's the new one. Not, I didn't need all of that. Um, so, or I didn't have all of that. I wish I did, but. Uh, so time to load over FTP. So I thought, wait, wait, where do you attach the LAN? I didn't think about this before. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna load over FTP and wait, I gotta attach it somehow. So I knew what an OSA card was at the time, and I was like, so this, this isn't configured anywhere until something loads up. And I was like, okay, so what, a, uh, yeah, I figured out that you attach it to the LAN port on the ThinkPad, uh, and it loads through that. I didn't actually know what those ports were for. I thought maybe for remote hardware management consoles, but yeah, so uh, FTP password. Don't put special characters in it. <laughs> Uh, I learned the hard way, hours, uh, thinking it was a network problem, thinking I had it hooked to the wrong place, uh, thinking just something was off, and then I, I was sitting there like, okay, am I just typing this password wrong? Typed it really slowly. Oh, the explanation mark didn't go in. Okay, that's simple fix, but hours. Uh, but finally, loading over FTP. Uh, CD-ROM, you may ask, my support elements don't have CD-ROM, so. Uh, so success, I loaded Think Blue, uh, and in the operating system messages anyway, so, all right, let's try SSH. Worked perfectly. So, progress has been made. Here's the sixth roadblock. <laughs> this is what the next half of the slot, of half the presentation is about. So, I saw this coming from a mile away, I knew that DASD was going to be an expensive issue, um, but I figured, ah, we'll worry about that later. Uh, so I got to that later, and uh, now all proper FICON SCON based storage is way too expensive, thousands of dollars from what I've mostly seen. Trust me, I've searched for hours. Um, I've seen some people score stuff cheap, but I haven't see, didn't see anything pop up. All bus and tag storage is too hard to get. If anybody knows of any, let me know. I will hook it to that machine. Um, I'm sure there's one or two basements around here filled with. Well, then tell me about it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so the other, you know, other option I knew about was SAN attached to a FICON port via Fiber Channel Protocol. So, started to gather stuff with that plan in mind because it was dirt cheap. So, this is the list of stuff I got for that plan in mind. Uh, SAN Data Gateway, uh, it's it basically just converts SCSI to fiber channel. Uh, switch, I didn't think I'd need it, but I actually ended up needing it. SCSI converter, because I learned the difference between differential and single-ended SCSI. Uh, <laughs> LC to LC, LC to SC, uh, just got to, just the case one had a problem. Uh, HP, old HP storage works, I got that for free um, from a professor of mine, so. and. Uh, SFP transceiver here. Remember that one. So this is the mess of a storage setup here. So there's the, uh, uh, the SCSI array. There's the SAN data gateway. There's the uh, switch. There's the SCSI converter, which is meant for inside of a case, inside of a PC case. So you have a Rolex and Dell power supply. Worried that might blow up at some point. So, oh. so. Seventh roadblock storage again. So I had to figure out how to actually configure fiber channel protocol. 
I've never touched it before, let alone actually SCSI. So mainly the same sand out of gateway, I had to configure that. Uh, I had no idea how to configure that. I knew there was a serial port on it hooked up to it, got a console. Um, so yeah, headaches ensued with that, all of that. So um, did you remember that, that module? Yeah, so after two days of not being able to get it working, I learned that Z890 has long wave and all of my stuff had short wave. I obviously haven't messed with fiber before either. So yeah, user error strikes again. And of course, I have to wait a week for that to get shipped off eBay. So <laughs> this is where I got, I, with the uh, SAN, uh, install I installed CentOS. That was great. That, this took hours. Um, then the eighth road block, IPL. So this is where the project hit a dead end for a while. Um, I couldn't IPL the machine because I was missing feature code 9904. That's the SCSI IPL feature uh, code. And it was, it was a free feature code back in the day, but it's not offered anymore. So all I need is the floppy disk. If anybody has that floppy disk, let me know. Um, three and a half inch. So, yeah, um, it may have been a way to modify the installer to see the fiber channel storage and load that way, but I sort of didn't know where to start with that, and I didn't know to mess with that. So I, I just sort of went looking for storage, uh, FICON, SCON-based storage. So this, this is why we can't have nice things. This is what the feature code looks like. You usually don't have these options. You have normal and clear. So with all of this addressing. Um, so now what? Uh, main option I've been keeping an eye on was it used DS6000 and 8000. Tend to be expensive, over $1,000 on eBay. Some pop up cheaper, but infrequently. Other options, I was contacted by a company named Fundamental Software Incorporated, FSI. Uh, they had an option that while out of my price range, they graciously lent me to get the machine up and running before share. So a flex cub, essentially a PCI card. Some may be familiar with it. Acts as SCON, everything. Uh, DASD, tape, consoles, communications, printers, card, reader, punch. Uh, you can read more about them there because I don't know about it that much. So they basically sent a setup box and I went running with it. So, and that's basically what it is. It's just box emulates everything, hooks the mainframes. It's great, that's what I, what I needed. So installation attempt number two. This time I'm installing on, uh, they had 16 3990 mod nines set up, so small but numerous. Uh, I could have gone with FBA as some have told me, but they already had that set up, so I just went with it. Um, yeah, and installation for real this time, uh, I went with Seuss as recommendation from Mark Post. Uh, <laughs> he, he did contact me about share, so what can you do? Um, so yeah, that took forever to install, uh, like six hours or so. Um, 1.46 gigs apparently takes six hours on an older machine. Who knew? Um, done, IPL'd. There we go. Pinging Google, uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise 11, patch level four, IBM S390, three CPs. It works. <laughs> so, I will come over here and connect to it. Oh, uh, did I lose Wi-Fi? I forgot to pray to the demo gods, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, okay, it's going now. There we go. There we go. Yeah. 
And so a friend of mine installed Lynx for fun. So we'll go to share.org. Uh, always. There we go. There is share.org in text mode. <laughs> and, and for fun, we'll, we'll go to IBM.com. And what I find is apparently they have some default content here. <laughs> so. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So, uh, okay. Now I'm going to find where I was. Basement warmer? A little bit. <laughs> but actually, no, surprisingly, it, it doesn't uh, pump out too much heat. Yeah, I was actually, I was thinking about that, but how do you... Will not be Here we go. There you go. And then last week, I had an emergency shutdown. <laughs> <laughs> the basement started flooding. So I, I actually, I, I got in contact with uh, an IBM uh, PR person and asked about being flown out to Interconnect. Since this happened last week, probably good thing I didn't uh, because I would have learned the hard way that my mainframe was down and my demo wouldn't work. So yeah, because I was in the basement sitting at my desk when I turned around and saw water everywhere. So. Yeah, my parents wouldn't have known. They never go down there. It's, it's my basement with, with, <laughs> with, with my mess of stuff. There, there's, a, there's a coupler modem there. There's a, yeah, so, for fun. Um, so an overview, so you want to buy your own mainframe? Uh, well, first you'll want to disassemble, move the machine to its desired location, or just move it if you have the money for a box truck truck with a lift gate, uh, reassemble, check all of your connections, check them all, uh, get power run for it, whatever that may be, whatever you have available, find suitable storage, good luck, uh, set up IOCDS, reset profile LPAR, uh, and load installer via FTP or DVD, and install desired OS and IPL. So apparently that doesn't like to be formatted properly. Uh, so yeah, so this is the cost add up of everything. Uh, I believe there's not too much after that anyway. Basically it comes out to about a total of $350. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I had someone from IBM run the serial number for me and the original price tag was $350,000. <laughs> So, so <laughs> thousand-fold decrease in oh, 10 years. So my relationship with IBM, this has changed over share. Uh, so a few people from IBM have given me good info from IBM Maine. Uh, I haven't tried contacting anyone specifically from IBM. I figured share would be a good resource for that. Um, got in contact with one of our PR people through someone I know about speaking interconnect got ignored. I just assumed they were busy. They probably had better things to be doing. Uh, but talking to the wrong people. <laughs> so, um, but you know, uh, I did, however, learn that I get ZOS 1.13 for $125 a month for like three MIPS. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sure it was a sales rep doing his job. Um, <laughs> So, and another IBM employee ran the zero number, showed me the original price. So, 
What's next? Uh, get a working DS6000 or other storage solution. Uh, in the picture of the storage, you may have noticed I had something DS6000 related, and I do, but I haven't been able to get it working. So I have problems with that. Uh, hook up a real 3270 terminal to the machine via the 3174-61R uh, that I have for fun, you know. Amber's a nice color. Uh, <laughs> Possibly play around with ZBM 5.3e Valid Edition. I just need an HMC to install it, which some people have already talked to me about. So maybe. Uh, and yeah, other things like testing out, running things, say like a website on it for, say, database performance, because IO throughput on a mainframe is clearly superior to, say, x86. So there's anything. And here's, here's the thanks slide. So my parents. This is Joe Krakowski for being so supportive. You could probably only imagine. Um, <laughs> Mark Post for originally reaching out to me about speaking at Chair. Phil Smith, guy sitting right here, uh, from HPE, who helped get HPE to smotch my way out, which was very kind of them. And if anybody has ties with them, thank them for me. So, Neil Ferguson and Phil again for inviting me to Hill Gang to uh, give a test run of my speech so that I could get feedback and make sure that I give you the best presentation I could. Uh, Gary Eamon. Eamon from SFI for getting me the Flex Cub on loan. Uh, everyone from IBM Maine who also gave help along the way. Uh, and John Knertz, uh, he was the guy who, so if anybody remembers from Interconnect last year, if you went, uh, there was a guy who installed Minecraft on a Z series, Minecraft server. That's him. I got in contact with him through Reddit, and he sat so graciously on Skype calls with me for probably like over 24 hours over a weekend helping me figure this out. He's a ZOS guy, but he knew as much about the hardware as I did, so we were both very confused. <laughs> um, so, and again, huge thanks to HP, who did my way out here, and also huge thanks to FSI for Flex Cub that allowed me to give you a demo and show something running on the thing instead of a sad ending where, well, I'm still waiting. So, yeah. that's it. So. We've got quite a bit of time for questions, and that's how to contact me. And bonus, share songbook. That's the link to download it. <laughs> someone I know found someone that had this. I had to get it scanned, and I had to let everybody here have access to it. So has this experience changed your mind about becoming an electrical engineer? So the question was, uh, has this experience uh, changed my mind about being an electrical engineer? Um, Maybe I ha definitely have other options now, but uh, <laughs> I, electrical engineering is a lot of math. Uh, so well, maybe we'll, we'll see. Have your parents gotten their first electrical bill yet? <laughs> <laughs> so the question was, have my parents got the first electrical bill yet? And funnily enough, uh, the first two days I ran the thing, uh, which was basically doing nothing. Um, uh, we looked at the electric bill, and the day before I even plugged it in, it was actually higher usage than the two days I actually hooked it up. So I, I don't think this thing consumes too much at idle, but under load, maybe. I, I'm actually only running it on a 20 amp breaker because that's what I have available. And <laughs> maxing out the CPs, I haven't blown the breaker. So I, I, don't th I think it's probably 15 amps max. So, yeah. Do you like this shirt? The question is, do I like this shirt? And yeah, looks, looks OK. This is a logo for Linux One. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
how much RAM is in that machine you bought? So the question is how much RAM is in the, the machine. Uh, mine has eight gigs of RAM. I should also mention the model number probably. It's a, it's a 320, so three of a, out of the four CPs enabled at a two out of seven speed. Uh, so, yeah. What do you plan on doing with, with it now? The question was, well, what do I plan on doing with it now? Uh, well, I, like I said, I probably just playing around on it, learning about it, uh, if I can get ZOS on it or ZBM, learn about that. Um, maybe try programming on it uh, and s just some random interesting experience experiments that maybe nobody else has done before. So, yeah. If anybody has any, yeah. If anybody has any ideas, feel free. I'll get you a ZOS license. There we go, round of applause for this man. <laughs> Tell them where you're at with school. <laughs> okay, so uh, Phil asked that I tell everyone where I'm at with school. So I am 18 years old. Uh, I started college two years ago in Maryland. You get your GED at 16. My mother told me about this, and I was like, sure, what do I have to lose? And the GED was the easiest thing I've ever taken. Uh, so um, I was, I'm going to a small community college near me. I was mostly exploring career paths since it's cheap. I was ahead of everyone anyway. Getting some transferable credits couldn't hurt. So uh, yeah, and now I'm looking for uh, some university to go to for electrical engineering, maybe computer science, we'll see. Uh, and so I'm basically open to suggestions. So if anybody wants to pitch their amazing college that they went to and had a great experience at. Go ahead after the talk, so, yeah. Was the flood due to the grading? Uh, so the house has a natural sump. It's just got a drain that goes downhill and drains, and there was mud that accumulated because of some groundhogs that have been living under the deck, so. <laughs> we stuck a pump. Disturbed. Yeah. Disturbed, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So stuck a pump down there and it was and it was good. Not too bad. Uh, I sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, could you repeat that question? <laughs> Do you have any plans to play around also with CTPF or ZBSD? The question was: Do I have any plans to play around with? Lots of letters. TPF or VSE. TTP. Do you, do you want to say it? TPF or VSE. Okay, TPF or ZFE. Uh, so, someone would have to give me a crash course on that because I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, the other. Okay, the other operating systems. Do you plan on selling the house with the if my, my parents actually have talked to me about this problem. <laughs> it's like, what if we want to sell the house? And I'm like, well, I guess you will be selling a house and a mainframe. But <laughs> if, if I get some place to move it to before then, then I suppose I will be taking it with me. So. Yeah. I would stay away from bus and tag gas fees. Yeah. Even if it will run on single-phase power, which I doubt, uh, the power Yes, but I've, so, recommendation to stay away from bus and tag DASD. Well, I'm, I'm crazy enough, I've already put a mainframe in my basement. <laughs> I, 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 I like vintage computers, I like repairing vintage stuff, and while it would be a lot of work, I would absolutely love to have some vacuum column tape drives hooked up to this thing. And doing something in Linux, say, which, which was called Unix <laughs> then, probably, so. Yeah. Still any printers or punch, uh, card punches or card readers on the market? You, on the eBay at all? Is that the are, are there any uh, punch card readers, punches, uh, readers, or anything available on the market? Uh, yes and no. There are some key punches on eBay that people want like 15 grand for. They're out of their mind. Uh, <laughs> and for readers, good luck. 
uh, readers just don't exist. Uh, the key punches were plentiful enough that they sort of are out there, but the readers, I don't, I've never seen one for sale, so. What's next? Uh, well, I, I believe I've received this question twice now, so I, I, I'm trying to come up with different answers each time to make it interesting, but <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna run out of things. So uh, just quite honestly, I, I wanna use this machine for learning experience, obviously. So I, I want to try everything within my reach within a reasonable amount of time. Uh, uh, my parents, probably don't want to keep paying to power this thing even though it doesn't consume much they think it does. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I was being told about music, uh, McGill University, or student something. Interactive or student interactive computing. So, um, yeah, I mean, sounds like something interesting to do with it. Um, and. So a funny story about recouping costs on this machine. A day or two after I posted about it, posted about it on IBM Main, a small company that does barcode printing for ZOS or something uh, contacted me and said, would you be sharing or selling time on this? <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, I guess if I ever get it running? But, it, yeah, um, they said, that's fine, we already found someone. And I was like, wait, you were serious? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, is there any more room in your parents' basement for anything else? Absolutely. <laughs> and, and the question was, is there any more room in my parents' basement? Would your parents agree with that? Would my parents agree with that? They don't have to know about it. <laughs> have you reached out to IBM regarding any options for sponsorship or perhaps uh, further access to resources to try to build up your ability to really utilize this mainframe? Have, have I contacted IBM or talked to IBM about more resources to, for my mainframe? And yes, I have. I've been talking with them and they have been talking with me. So uh, yeah, I, I think hopefully within the future I will have a little bit more running on it and maybe even make it available for other people to mess around on so that they can also learn. Because I, I, I could give you the IP address, I don't care, anybody could connect to it. I'll give you the root login, blow it up, I have a backup. <laughs> I, I would, I would much, I would much rather see someone blow it up. It would be funny. Uh, so, yeah. So your deadline for the um, Basdi really is what? How? When is the license for the Flex Cub? Uh, when does the license expire for the Flex Cub? Uh, when do I have to get other Basdi? Uh, I they gave me like six months or like seven months, something like that. So it's it's a while, but. Um, it's, it's slow, small compared to FICON, obviously, because SCON's quite a bit slower than FICON. Uh, this machine has FICON 4 gig, which is slow compared to what they have now, 16 gig. So, you know, but it's still miles better than SCON, and I would like to be able to play around with that performance and see what it has to offer. I think you've raised the bar on what all of us expect from our kids now. <laughs> so if if you uh, actually want to connect, I will. Uh... You'll probably be getting a call soon from a seller at IBM asking you to upgrade. <laughs> So there's the IP address. Uh, it's just standard SSH port 22, and yes, I know that's probably not a good idea. And I know it's not because uh, China has been trying to log in for the last, <laughs> I, I kid you not, for the last uh, two weeks, I've been getting uh, SSH attempts from China, but 
they haven't got in yet, so. Eh. I have several hundred subnet ranges that you can add to your IP table rules for that, because I've blocked them off my <laughs> Okay. No. I think we owe Connor a big round of applause.